Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Good morning. A todas y a, a todos. Para mí es un It's a pleasure and an honor to participate in this event. En esta presentación Today, que se va a realizar en we will be presenting a fourth information within the framework of the of citizens' participation uh, initiative to for safer um, uh, vehicles, as well as the Vehicle Safety Survey 2021 that will be presented today by El Poder del Consumidor, as well as uh, Dinamia. We have a, a couple of speakers that have importantly fostered in Mexico the issue of vehicle safety uh, with decision makers today. Mexico is involved in a series of regulatory and legislative uh, procedures uh, intended to um, foster better, uh, better safety for mobility. Mobility, uh, safe, safe mobility is now considered a a right. A right that now the constitution provides us with a legal framework to access. This has arisen in a series of processes, such as the general law for mobility and road safety, as well as procedures of uh, standards, the 124 official Mexican standard for uh, vehicular safety. And, um, this uh, survey, the survey will, that we will be presenting, is, uh, is intended as an input for lawmakers that are addressing road safety in our country and for all of these matters to become, uh, to become law and regulation. This is a tool to bring the citizenry closer. It is very important to know what is the citizenry perception regarding the issues with vehicle safety in our country. What are our rights and knowing our rights as consumers, as uh, Mexican citizens and as users of the roads. Tools of this sort are undoubtedly essential to frame the processes that are being carried out within our country to address uh, road safety. Every year, it is challenging to know that 16,000 people die in a transit related uh, event. So I wouldn't like to miss the opportunity to mention this because without question, this is an exercise that will reach that will reach uh, the lawmakers. Omar Gutierrez is joining us from Dinamia as well as Stefan Brodniak from um, El Poder del Consumidor. They will first introduce the 2021 Vehicle Safety Survey, and then we will have the participation of Alma Chavez from uh, victim, Victimas de la Violencia Vial, Victims of Road uh, uh, Violence. It is important to have the participation as a first step. I would like to briefly mention his uh, bios. Oscar is a uh, as a master's in communication and by UDLA, and has 15 years of experience in social uh, research. He has positioned Dynamia as the expert agency on research for social causes and uh, procedures that promote the sustainable development. Stefan Brosniak, we're glad to have you. He has participated in the, part in the uh, preparation of a standard 134 regarding um, vehicle safety devices. He's the coordinator of the vehicle safety campaign at the Poder del Consumidor and he is currently president of the Council um, for the assessment of new vehicles in Latin America and the Caribbean. This will be the first stage of this um, event. I'll give them the floor now. Thanks so much, Paola. Thanks to all our colleagues from the panel, as well as uh, to those joining us through the Facebook um, live broadcast. Let's now review the results of the vehicle safety survey that was carried out at the Dinamia alongside El Poder del Consumidor. First of all, to briefly explain what the methodology was, this is an online survey 
we conducted around 1,662 uh, online interviews. We divided, we divided this uh, interviews between Mexico City and the surrounding areas in the state of Mexico. 400 were carried out in Mexico City, 440 in the surrounding area. 408 were carried out in the surrounding area of Monterrey and for the city of 114 in the greater Guadalajara zone. So we interviewed people that, intend, that intended to purchase a new vehicle in the, in the following years to explore their opinion regarding the safety features that the vehicles they are thinking of purchasing should uh, contain. The maximum error is 2.4% at a 95% confidence level, which is a low error level in this sample of uh, more than uh, 1,600 interviews in our target audience. What can I share about these results? Well, first of all, the first question we would like to share with you, what we asked people, you will see this on screen on the left uh, icon, that is the question. Thinking of the new car you would like to purchase, which are the most important criteria to decide which um, vehicle to buy? Undoubtedly, the most important was price. 19%. We mentioned this. Uh, this for the first, second, and third uh, answers at times. Then, um, fuel efficiency and uh, yield of it. On the third uh, place, we'll find vehicular safety uh, safety features, then afterwards there are other uh, types of, of, of matters such as um, comfort, uh, equipment, and so on. But the third most important criterion is uh, safety uh, features. Yes, please, Stefan. If you could please go back to the prior uh, slide. I would just like to briefly highlight that the third aspect, vehicular safety feature, in past years, it had been quite lower. It is the first time that it has achieved an interest level of this type as part of purchase criteria so that it becomes third place. When we first conducted this survey around 2015, this criterion was actually in seventh place, just above like the interior space as well as the trunk space. But before that, there were other things that seemed to be important as, as, as abstract, as style and comfort and so on. The next question we would like to share, Kirsten, uh, in general, would you say which of these aspects are, uh, are essential, desirable, or necessary for the safety of the vehicle during the purchase the following year? We found that price position 78% of people considered that a stable structure that was proven with, with the crash tests as not a throughout the world are considered essential in this future car people intended to purchase. Tied on a second place are safety belts, three points safety, safety belts for all passengers, and that the car has sufficient uh, airbags, uh, front, lateral, and uh, also curtain uh, airbags with 71%. On a, on a question, when we asked, uh, when we explained this further, and I will go back to the prior slide, there are vehicular safety elements that people do not necessarily know what, uh, what they are or how they work. For example, the stability control system. There are others, 
such as uh, collection technologies, and people do not necessarily know about them. Uh, people should know uh, about this. Of course, this is not an exam. This is just uh, measuring uh, public awareness. Uh, they do not necessarily know what this technology control system is. But we explain, when we ask people, what, what, what does this mean? What is the stability control system? We explain them that this system prevents 80% of all risk situations arising from, uh, from skidding. This is the second most important safety feature after the safety policy. And after knowing this, then we asked people if they consider this to be essential, desirable, or necessary. And the percent of the population that considers, that considers it essential goes to more than 80 percent. On the prior slide, we saw that around 60 percent of the people consider it essential upon explaining its importance and its uh, purpose. The percentage uh, rose to 83. Uh, Comment like you know, but you are uh, just explain it. It's not just that people do not want certain safety features, it is that people do not know what these safety, what these safety features are. And once people know what is the purpose of these safety devices, then of course interest grows and they start to look at this as uh, with the relevance they have, especially when. What is at stake is the liberty and the life of the passengers in a situation of, um, of a crash. Same thing happened with the less from protection. We saw how the percentage of the population that considered this is Protection technologies, 41% of people considered it important during the survey. But when we explain that the standard for pedestrian protection is the design and the use of materials that will protect cyclists uh, or, um, or pedestrians in a case of the, of the, when they're run over, the percentage of people that consider it essential rose to 50%. That is why what this slide show is that people need to understand what are the measures that can protect them and that can protect other users of code. And uh, once people are aware of what this is for, then uh, it's essential. That's just brevemente a few questions that as the big vehicle safety has been evolving. We're currently at a stage where vehicles should no longer just be safe for the people that are using them, not just for the, for the driver the, or the passenger or the children that are passing up. But uh, there are technologies that have existed for years in the market that are starting to consider a higher protection for other users of the road, either the occupants of other vehicles or more vulnerable users such as pedestrians, cyclists, or even motorcyclists. Continuing with this uh, result, we asked people how, how adequate do they consider that current safety standards for cars in Mexico are to protect the population. And this is not a knowledge test. People do not necessarily know which are the current standards. And even, even considering that, only 33% of people consider them very, uh, very adequate. And only 43% consider them somewhat adequate or suitable. Uh, well, another aspect we wanted to highlight from El Poder Comitor is that even though people, as Omar said, do not know what are the vehicles safety technologies, they have intuitive and empirical knowledge of it. Uh, they know that there's something that's not right. They know that vehicle safety standards are not optimal. 
because we all have uh, family members perhaps that have been victims or maybe some of us might have uh, survived an accident, a road accident. And uh, we know that this incident could have prevented a serious injury and literature on vehicular safety indicates that. So, intuitively, People know that there's something that can improve. And with this uh, piece of data that uh, Paola showed with us in the presentation, 44 uh, deaths a day arising uh, from traffic accidents, a lot of the population have reference uh, for their opinion regarding current safety standards of, of vehicles in our country. We asked people, in your opinion, what do you think when you believe that vehicular safety standards in Mexico are more stringent than in Europe or the United States, just as stringent as it is to regions and less stringent? Almost um, around 60, more than 60 percent considered that uh, vehicles that are being marketed in Mexico follow less stringent safety standards than in the United States or Europe. And people do not know about uh, the actual official Mexican standards, uh, but their experience is sufficient for them to have an opinion that the standards that are being used in our country are less strict than in Europe or the United States. Yes, Omar, I would just like to, to underscore that as an example of the in Europe, Europa, le, el estándar de protección frontal impact, impact standard was prepared in the 1994, and it became regulation during that same year. Entonces, eh, y apenas in our en country, país, apenas la totalidad de all the vehicles sold in our country país started to cover front impact standards in 2021. That is to say, de, eh, 27 years behind some of the standards that have already been implemented worldwide. Thank you. We asked as the population that we interviewed more than 1,600 individuals in the greater um, areas around the surrounding the largest cities in Mexico. I am outraged that low safety vehicles are being sold in Mexico that would not be sold in another country. 59% of the population uh, was uh, well, highly agreed and 27% somewhat agreed that they agreed to the, to the outrage that um, low safety vehicles are sold in our country. I would like that the government regulate in a more stringent way that the automobile industry. 71% agreed, and 23% somewhat agreed that uh, Mexico should regulate the automotive industry in a much uh, more stringent way. Uh, here from El Poder del Partido, we're, we're sharing this uh, feeling of uh, of outrage, because if we analyze what has happened in other countries with regard to the big safety, and if we look at the possibilities for those companies that are selling vehicles in the United States, Europe, Australia, in Mexico, and other countries in South and Central America, we know that it's something that can be done, and they are not doing it. Therefore, we are outraged that the automotive industry has, for decades, discriminated us in terms of providing us less safety, because they are mostly focused on optimizing profits at the expense, at the expense of vehicle safety and road safety in Mexico and in most of our region. How much, how much do you agree or disagree that the government demands that all new vehicles sold in Mexico have the same safety standards as in the cars sold in the United States, Europe, and Japan? Uh, Eighty percent. Uh, highly agree with this. It is possible to intervene on this, and the people are asking that the, that the government 
takes action in this regard, that they demand that they demand that cars uh, purchased in our country um, comply with these same standards. For nine out of ten uh, uh, respondents, it was very important that all the vehicles sold in our country have the minimum vehicular safety system. This is important in the context of the discussion for this official standard that the system that are considered as the bare minimum are used. As when we discuss minimum vehicle safety standards, we're mentioning what the United Nations Organization alongside the WHO have determined that is the bare minimum of vehicular safety that should exist in the world to properly protect the occupants of the vehicle as well as other users of the roads, most importantly, vulnerable users, such as cyclists, uh, pedestrian motorcyclists also. In our country, these vulnerable individuals are around 65% of all um, victims that have to lose their life due to traffic accidents. It is very important that safety standards that we have and the World Health Organization have specified and have recommended are fulfilled in our country. We're discussing electronic stability control, also impact tests, the different impact tests that vehicles should comply with, front impact, lateral impact, lateral impact, as well as the acting, Para los sistemas for a child, for for children, as well as standards to safety belts and fundamental to protect the main users of the roads, which are the extremes. Going back to the question, I don't know if people agree that the vehicles that are sold in the country should have its minimum vehicular safety systems. Also, uh, uh, the question stated, how much would you agree with this that that would uh, bind all, all vehicle manufacturers so that all vehicles sold in Mexico meet the minimum vehicular safety standards recommended by the United Nations. 74% of respondents would highly agree with the implementation of the implementation of the standards. I wanted to to put it into context, uh, Paula has already mentioned that the standard that is drafted, but the standard that currently regulates the standards for vehicles, which future vehicles is uh, currently at the stage of public comments. We have a website. And we're inviting all the parties to send their comments to the Ministry of Economy. It is very important to do so. You can send your email address and send a public comment that needs to be that will be validated by local experts for vehicular safety. To petition the government to improve this standard is going to be done with the best of protection, nor an information system for consumers, but we will address that in a moment. That is what is essential to reduce the debt arising from the accidents. This is the web page, www. It will be possible to look at the comment, the technical, technical justification, and send these comments over to the Ministry of Economy. 
We also asked the population about crash tests that are performed by Latin Captain Latin America Cap project. Uh, and we to rate the safety performance of big in the event of an accident. New vehicle assessment programs perform different uh, crash tests where the crash dummy, this, uh, that the result uh, is a rating from zero to five stars, five stars to those that fully comply with the, with the right standard, which shows uh, comparative uh, images in the population, one that is rated with zero stars and one that is five stars. So how important is it for you that you can judge others and inform the public about the car screening? That is, when I go to purchase a vehicle from either, I would be informed to know the car screening of the vehicle. When purchasing it, 90% of the people considered it very important. That the distributor, that the concession holder, inform them about how the vehicle they are thinking of purchasing behaved before they. Uh, yes, yes can you explain a bit about uh, stars? Zero star vehicle in one of the tests performed. There is a. It is a very possible to know. No, in, life to be a, que, que in some of the um, crash tests el, el that the car uh, is uh, going to this test, that means it is possible no, el nivel de compresión que tuvo to determine what was the compression level of the dummy somewhere in its body and without the There are without La vida, eh, the lives of uh, las personas, ¿no? y eso es lo que reflejan los domis. Ahora, now el nuevo protocolo article, de Latin NCAP también se empieza a valorar la seguridad que se otorga y usos vulnerables de la vía, con lo cual ya no solamente se trata de los ocupantes, sino también but, eh, un auto de los reyes puede ser porque tiene un mal desempeño en la vía de presión que brinda a los otros usuarios fuera de la vía de presión que brinda a los otros usuarios Stefan, Stefan no, just no, 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 no. this. What is the test for the speed? What the front in the test is carried out at 64 kilometers per hour. La prueba de impacto de la velocidad y la prueba de impacto de la velocidad carried out at about 30 kilometers per hour. It is muy baja. Sin embargo, es la prueba más However, it is the most exigente to meet uh, the occupants. It was if a car was zero start, it was zero start, it was because it was tested at 200 kilometers per hour. It was ticked before. That is right. Yeah, we can see how fragile the vehicles are los vehículos y and the impact that this might have in, in the human body. Gracias. Continuing with the results, almost all its respondents, 81% um, fully agreed and 60% that companies should be bound to label vehicles that um, indicate which, which are the safety measures that cars have to not have and what they're talking about crash test. And this is a matter of communication right of the population to be informed. Sobre lo que está buscando, to do an informed, um, more than 80% of the population fully agree that uh, there is a clear and visible safety labeling of the cars that are uh, marketed. The purpose of asking this question is to make fundamental information visible. Because sometimes, or actually, most of the time, it's not existing. Uh, in the uh, concessionaires, no? 
o sea, solo hay unos cuantos only, uh, con, la, con los dedos de una mano que han decidido incluir el, el, la calificación de estrellas, porque obviamente son cinco estrellas, eh, la han decidido incluir en, en, como parte de sus estrategias de venta. Sin embargo, si uno ve en las fichas técnicas, eh, hay dos cosas de las fichas técnicas. Una, están meten información de los dispositivos de seguridad que tienen, pero la meten de forma eh, muy... Eh, eh, Muchas veces oh, es muy difícil de comprender para los, eh, para los posibles compradores. Porque por, en primer lugar están inmersas en un mar de tecnicismos, como el tipo de suspensión, el pago eh, de cosas que son, eh, cosas, cosas que son de un nivel muy ingenieril. ¿no? Y la otra es que no existe. There is actually no information about the safety performance that is being offered by vehicles. And when we talk about the performance, it is not whether you have A, B, S, the brake or a stability control or not. It is, it is about knowing how much this is actually performed. Do they truly perform to protect the integrity of their occupants, whether they are adults or children, it is the driver, o los as well as la, la, the safety de seguridad que brinda for a others users que están that are also using the public space at the road eh, um, and are sharing it no with the vehicles. Lo que hacer that does not exist at the one. Lado, First of all, break this asymmetry of information that exists between el, the manufacturer, el, the distributor, and the consumer. And on the other hand, having más more information que está that is available to certain vehicles that have been, been, uh, that have been tested no by the lab cap. Gran mayoría de los vehículos. No, está para los for, algunos de los más populares, big, pero no existe. For, esa debería de for many existir porque como consumidores tenemos all derecho a que los riesgos de un producto que implica para nuestra vida, para nuestra salud, salud y eso está consagrado. That is said for the federal law for consumer protection, and it is also enshrined in the Constitution. Tener derecho al, a la movilidad we have the right de to, uh, y para esto right es to mobility tener with safety. And for that, we need a communication instrument, such as the labeling, to know what are the risks that a vehicle is uh, putting only to me, but also to my family. And uh, I'm putting other people do not know that their cars are not as safe as uh, is all in terms of the presentations of the presentation of the results of the survey. Uh, Paola, and the floor is... Uh, Estefan, eh, muchísimas gracias. Omar, eh, uh, una thank you very much. Eh, muy, muy uh, no uh, illustrative. De, de de un de un no solamente eh, hacer Just wanted to para, um, la participación de, de la try to participate. Eh, estamos hablando de un tema que a la de and the physical um, well-being of people. There is sufficient scientific and technical evidence to protect and prevent deaths or serious injury arising from public accidents. Omar, undoubtedly, this, this perception you're showing us from needs to reach decision makers. It is a way to perform this regulatory process. We need to get to the people that are participating in the uh, participants in the standards and also thank you, Stefan, for this technical explanation with um, Omar's um, information. I would like to highlight important aspect. I believe that one, there is an, an interest from all citizens that the vehicles we are consuming 
cumplan con los estándares de seguridad. ¿no? Eh, ya hay evidencia para saber cuál es la seguridad. Y la segunda es el derecho de como consumidores que tenemos de saber de todos los procesos de seguridad que se llevan. ¿Cómo podemos plasmar nuestras leyes? ¿Cómo podemos plasmar nuestras leyes? ¿Cómo podemos plasmar nuestras leyes? Derivado right del saying, uh, de estas herramientas, uh, que los consumidores uh, sepan de estos uh, procesos, uh, los resultados, uh, que tengamos uh, mecanismos, uh, de mecanismos de transparencia, transparencia de las autoridades, uh, por parte uh, de los, uh, de los uh, diseñadores uh, de automóviles, uh, por parte uh, de uh, las comercializadoras de, 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 de resultados uh, y de, uh, uh, del marco de estos procesos. No, no, no como, como bien lo dice Omar, no es un examen de conocimientos, pero sí, sí es un examen de conocimientos. Es un matter also of perception. De, de what citizens should demand because there is technology for this when we this when we talk about vehicle safety sometimes we do not know that vehicle safety and i'm saying this um and i'm saying this with its due nuances that there are implemented technologies to protect passengers to protect the children as well as other users of the road. What we need to do to guarantee these rights, the rights of the children, the cyclists, of the pedestrians also. This uh, type of tools are essential. I'd like to remind those that are joining us today, as well as our press um, colleagues, that you can add your questions, you can ask your questions through the Q&A box. Also, we will be receiving your comments through the chat box, and there will be a Q&A round um, for our panelists. Now, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Alma Chavez. Alma Chavez is a road, uh, it's a road auditor, member of the Latin American Network of Victims of Vehicular Violence, part of the Mobility Observatory of the city of Jalisco, of the, of the state of Jalisco. For many years, she has worked and has assumed the commitment of working for road safety, vehicular safety, and for the victims of traffic. Uh, incidents. So, Alma, the floor is yours. Good morning. Mexico is a very country, a country that has challenges. Safety and safe uh, mobility is one of the challenges. In my region, and I am sure that this human behavior uh, is um, widespread in the in our country. Citizens, one third of the citizens are pedestrians. Another third uh, uses uh, public transit, and a third of the population uses um, vehicles. Uses uh, one-person vehicles. Uh, about the people that use cars, actually. Well, most people do this on very um, old um, cars. There's also the problem of highly deficient and expensive public transit. That is why a lot of people, since they are not certain about being able to invest in a large amount of uh, resources for public transit, especially for numerous families, they decide to buy old vehicles. In many regions of our country, especially in the north, there are calls that are called chocolate vehicles, which are actually um, junk that are junk vehicles that are being discarded by the United States. So with these people that need to move and uh, to transport their families in a faster way, even though it is not a safer way, they decide to purchase these type of vehicles. I understand uh, that, pe that people aspire to have vehicles, but, but we're late. Because for many years we have been working on demanding that all vehicles that are marketed in our country have the minimum necessary requirements for road safety by passenger as well as by other by other individuals. And in, in, in the Mexican mindset, 
uh, car means status, and that is why the useful life of a vehicle in Mexico is very long. And this uh, these cars, these cars imported from the United States are an issue that needs to be addressed and that we could address um, later. We're late on safe on vehicle safety, but how can we change this reality? Well, through information and regulation. Saving lives in our streets and, ro and our roads and avenues need to, needs to bring together infrastructure uh, to protect the users. And something that um, is bringing us today here, that vehicles need to be safer. There is um, a lot of scientific evidence to save lives. A safe vehicle prevents uh, disabilities and the injuries. This um, survey presented by El Poder del Consumidor is highly valuable. Most consumers are demanding the government that the automotive industry is regulated. Future buyers want companies to provide the necessary information on vehicle safety. And in that way, they will make a conscious decision when purchasing a new vehicle. Citizens demand the regulation of the industry because they know that an unsafe vehicle can cause deaths and injuries, both to the occupants as well as to the other uh, uh, occupants of the roads. In this, we are all part of the solution. But today we're also part of the problem. It is the government's uh, duty to guarantee life and safety in this regard. It is um, it is really um, striking that we have not worked on the technology to protect pedestrians. Most people do not mention it in the first places of what uh, vehicles should include. Also, a lot of people do not know about the safety of children, of child safety. They do not know about anchoring for these um, anchorings or child retention systems, and they consider that in order to use uh, child retention uh, systems, just a uh, high city is enough. People consider that they stand still is important, but they do not understand that passenger ch children must be well fastened until they are 12 years old. And from the moment we're born until we're old, we need to are we all need to use safety belts as well as uh, well seat belts as well as child retention seats. I believe that we are moving forward considering the results of this survey. Thank you very much. Uh, Alma, for your comments. Undoubtedly, it would be impossible not to agree. Today, we have uh, obligations as states to cut by half all deaths and serious injuries arising from traffic accidents. We know that, that many of these are preventable and the vehicle safety is an essential component to fulfill these commitments and to address these serious issues we're facing. If it's okay, I would like to go to a new, um, or to go to the Q&A session with our panelists. I invite Stefan, Alma, and Omar to turn on uh, their cameras. I will be reading questions one by one. Deborah Samadini asks, is there any checklist we could share with our friends when they are, so they take it to the dealer when, in, when buying a, a, a car? How can we share this in social media? Can we share this checklist on social media if it exists? Yes, of course. We do have a guide for a safe and efficient car. Our website, a guide for a safe vehicle. 
we will um, make it available uh, for you in a moment. But there we have a list with which consumers or interested parties can know which are the essential aspects that they need to consider when intending to buy a vehicle. It is basically that it has an an electronic stability control, which includes the ABS system, brakes, as well as three-point seat belts for every passenger, as well as headrests, that it has anchoring systems for child retention systems, latch type or isofix type anchoring, that it contains that it is rated with four or five stars, that they demand the stars and in terms of performance we have seen that it is also very important that it uh, provides a performance of at least 16 kilometers per liter in terms of fuel efficiency that will reduce that will reduce uh, of course um, expenditure in terms of gas and uh, carbon emissions thank you Stefan if you would like to delve deeper into this, please um, go ahead. Second, the next question would be, why, do, why don't people know that their car is unsafe or that it has a low rating? Would anybody like to answer? Well, what I can answer with regards to this question, well, it is very difficult to know why people don't know what they don't know. It is difficult to know this in figures. People do not know that they do not have the full knowledge to assess the safety measures of the car they intended to buy. That is how, why the results are uh, striking in, in the sense that people agree that they need to be informed about these matters when they when they go to buy a car because they do not know that they don't know the importance of the safety features. When they are making a decision, when they go to a dealer and they are evaluating which car to buy. Thanks, Omar. I would like to contribute to what Omar is saying. This question is very interesting because it really summarizes information asymmetry. Indeed, people do not know that they don't know because they trust the brands. They would not believe that a car that is saying, selling vehicles in Europe or in Japan will, will, um, will reduce the safety that they're offering in other countries. They will be economically discriminating against us. Um, and this reminds me of the first uh, survey we did with Dynamia in 2015. There were people that believed that the Nissan Suru, a car that on crash tests, is compressed like a, like a tin can. Uh, uh, if you crushed a uh, soda can, that same thing happened happened to the uh, to the Suru, to the Nissan Suru. And when we asked the drivers of those cars what was their perception about the safety of those vehicles, a lot of people thought that it was uh, a safe vehicle, that it had a stable structure. People thought that it had ABS braking or even airbags, but in reality, it had none of those features, not only because the Nissan Corporation did not want to add them, but because that vehicle was designed in such an old platform that it was impossible, impossible to update it to meet the front impact standard, for example, or for it to be fitted with ABS brakes. 
por diseño no podían. Chucha Design and could not have it. And something else like to discuss um, in historical terms. And I'm sorry if I'm taking long here. Historically, this has been a struggle. The issue of safety, of vehicle safety, not only in Mexico. We are currently at the later stage of this struggle for vehicular safety, but we have fought for this for more than 80 years. If you remember old vehicles from the 40s, perhaps, and early 50s, on their front panel, they were very, they were very, very slight, they were different um, edges that looked very nice, that looked very streamlined. But this, when they crashed, when there were crashes, and these were the first vehicles that sounded the alarm throughout the world. It was doctors. Porque llegaban, eh, los pacientes because los, patients de los, de los choques, en esos primeros vehículos, that suffered a crash in those vehicles, they arrived with, uh, with mangled um, faces and, and bodies. De, de, de muchas cosas, no? eh, you ask Nader in the 60s and the struggle para este de, 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 for unsafe at any speed. De, against the general motors because of the suspension and the stability of its vehicles that was that were poorly designed. This person was hard, harshly confronted by the automotive industry. They were trying to silence this person because the paradigm is always the same. There is a preponderant economic uh, stakeholder uh, or actor that is um, dominant, almost mono monopolic. And without considering the consequences of what, without regarding the consequences that their business model is um, implying for the health and safety of um, the citizens of, um, of different countries. This has happened in Europe, in the United States, and that is the struggle that we're currently facing in our own country. When specialists go there and tell them that they need to address things in their production because these damages are becoming social, all of the population is paying for this because they are deciding to market uh, vehicles without ABS brakes or vehicles that do not meet the pedestrian protection standards because they have decided not to... Um, but you comply with, with uh, the different safety standards for vehicles. And the industry resists because it costs the industry. The thing is that for the industry, it is just a very tiny fraction of the actual cost that uh, injuries um, actually imply. If they don't pay for that fraction, society ends up paying it at a much, much larger uh, scale because it's not only the financial impact, it is a factor of... Uh, there are people that are moving in vehicles that are... And people are at one, one crash away from becoming orphans or from becoming poor after having to deal with many costs and that is the higher cost it is not how much money it will cost us it is the loss of life losing a family member losing a loved one or a spot or becoming permanently disabled these are the costs that that corporations do not want to assume of course not all corporations are the same there are people that are conducting better efforts, and we recognize that. And we are we are happy about it. But there are many others, and the brands have participated uh, some, somehow in this double standard because we are a producing country. That is why I'm discussing this double standard, because in Mexico, all manufacturers vehicles with the standards that are 
In Mexico, are being in Mexico, we manufacture vehicles that are properly safety rated for exports. That we are manufacturing vehicles that will be exported to Germany, to Japan, to the United States, or the, to Canada, following their safety standards as well as to the entire European Union. However, in Mexico, this uh, in Mexico, we are sold vehicles. Uh, we, that are much less safe, and that is what we do not want. We do not want this double standard. We do not want this financial discrimination. We do not want discrimination on safety, which is being sold to Mexican consumers in our country. So people do not know because this has never been a, a thing. People have never been sold safety. People have been sold comfort, power, luxury, status, as Alma said. People have been sold all that, but the only thing people have not been sold is what can protect them from the car's power, from the car's speed itself in the roads of our country, that is safety, and that is the pending issue. That is what we need in our country. And I'm sorry that it took so long. Uh, on the, in the country, Stefan, what, that was um, a great explanation. Thank you very much, and thank you, Omar. Rodrigo Larcón, reporter from La Octava Noticia, is joining us with a very specific question. What is the least safe vehicle? The least safe vehicle for many decades, as we all know, was the Nissan Suru, but also the GM Chevy had no safety features. The Ford Cat, the Volkswagen Gol on its first version, especially. The Ford Figo on its first uh, versions. We're not. We're now looking at 2021 vehicles that, according to the recent tests, there are vehicles that even comply with certain standards are not safe, as we have seen in the most recent assessments by Latin NCAP, because due to its their poor performance. It is zero or no start vehicle implies the risk of life um, for occupants. But thanks to the new Latin NCAP protocol, the safety it provides to pedestrians is now being evaluated. So these are the worst safety rated vehicles. It is not only about what they have or do not have in terms of safety uh, devices, but their performance. I did not possible to assess performance without a, sh a crash test and, Latin and, and the protocols followed by Latin NCAP. So that is um, the best way to determine which are the least safe vehicles, and they have all participated. Now the Toyota Yaris or the Suzuki Swift have been very poorly rated. The Toyota Yaris has one safety star, the, the Suzuki Swift has zero, zero stars. The Suzuki Paleno, a, a fully new vehicle, a new platform, is rated with zero stars. There are new vehicles that are now defective. Fortunately, these do not have the such poor levels of safety as the as the Chevy or, or the Suru, but men, all non-premium brands have participated in these double standards. I connect this to another question asked by Sara Pau. Are all cars tested? No, not all the vehicles are tested. Well, corporations do test their vehicles. They know their le the level of compliance with impact tests, with impact tests in general. 
Pero no todos But that information is, it com, is a proprietary information. It is an industrial secret. And it is confidential for Volkswagen or Nissan or General Motors or Toyota will say, I will, um, I will do this simple test for the European market, but for Latin America or Mexico or Africa or certain Asian countries, I won't be doing it. I won't be meeting that. Of course, they will never tell you. That is why we needed the Mexican chapter for NCAP uh, tests. It should be recognized from the government as an information tool for consumers to inform them of the risks they are exposing themselves to by purchasing certain vehicles. This is an entity that carries out independent tests that are impartial and based on scientific evidence and on protocols that have been scientifically established to assess the safety performance of vehicles. So that is what we need for consumers in Mexico. Unfortunately, not all vehicles have a Latin NCAP performance test. Fortunately, however, most of the most popular vehicles are actually being continuously assessed but that is insufficient. It is insufficient because this program has limited uh, resources to assess all vehicles. Everything is cascading down. So once um, consumers have access to this type of information, then um, necessarily the marketers will have to improve these standards. Can I make a comment? Yes, of course. What you are mentioning, and of course, I'm sad. I'm sad to see how in Mexico life is not being valued. That is criminal negligence. That consumers are not informed about how unsafe vehicles are, and that that information is uh, classified or is secret. Even if the government knows how much, uh, how many deaths, how many, how much pain has been endured by by families traveling in an unsafe vehicle, believing that it was safe, we are at a crucial moment to demand that the authorities regulate the automotive industry and make it transparent so that we're not filling hospitals and uh, cemeteries with people that uh, should have lived and, and they have uh, and, and that people have suffered such damages and that have um, people that are now uh, or people that have lost family members now is the time to regulate that thank you Alma, for your comment this question uh, has already been answered why has mexico not moved forward as other countries in terms of uh, vehicular safety i think you have addressed uh, some of this uh, would you like to add anything uh, Alma or omar well, I would just say that that the Mexican Association for the Automotive Industry has been very effective in, in interfering with regulation processes historically, not only in terms of vehicular safety, but also with emissions control and also with uh, fuel efficiency. It has been sadly effective in reducing the scope of this standard. For example, what happened in 2015 when we participated in the preparation of the first version of standard 194, which is currently in place, which should have incorporated from that moment at least electronic stability control, the pedestrian protection standard, as well as front and side impact tests. 
Unfortunately, it was just a, a front uh, impact, lateral impact, uh, ABS braking, and not considering this other very important aspect, despite the fact that we told the authorities, that we demanded this from the authorities, that we demanded that they included these standards and the response we received by the advisory board of standardization of the, of the Ministry of Economy was very, very sad. The size of the Mexican market is not, does not have the features to demand. We can say that the Mexican market cannot demand things for itself because of its size. It means that the million and a half, uh, million and a half of consumers are buying vehicles every year in our country has no right to the same safety offered as a standard in other countries. So it's economic discrimination. It is uh, discrimination that has terrible consequences for society. In our country, it was very sad to see that uh, response. And of course, we are still in this struggle. We now have the opportunity to publicly discuss this demand. We are demanding to have the proper standards as well as sufficient information, just the one presented by Latin NCAP, to demand it from this standard that is currently at this stage of, um, of public consultation. These are the final two questions. I will read them together. What, is, what role does the autonomy, the automotive industry play on vehicle safety? And second question, how much uh, are accidents and uh, road unsafety costing Mexicans in reality? Well, um, the, the automotive industry, as I said, given how preponderant it is and the weight it has and has had with different governments, it has not only interfered with regulations, but the first uh, version of it has been quite strong. They have bent the, the law to the, according to their wishes, that is one of the, that is something that the automotive industry has done. And not all, um, not all the industry is the same. There are corporations that have uh, accelerated um, industrial safety, um, well, actually vehicle safety adoption standards. However, to, however, we are not yet certain if they are truly meeting the minimum standards given the recommended standards of the United Nations, because we do not know. Since in Mexico, the national protection standards are not mandatory, we do not know which vehicles comply with them or, or not. There's only performance in terms of national protection that could be observed so the Latin MCAP protocols. That is the only tool that we actually have in place to verify that. How about the second question, sorry. How much is it costing us? How much are accidents and safety costing us? There was an assessment and analysis done in 2012 by the Johns Hopkins University alongside the Inter-American Development Bank, that, and they estimated the cost range in terms of the, of the GDP, how much it costed to Mexican society. And they estimated a cost that went from 1.7 to 3.5% of the GDP, which is a chilling figure. Recently, for 2018, I believe, or actually 2019, 
no recuerdo bien, el Instituto, Mexican Institute for Competitiveness determined determinó eh, con eh, with very conservative muy estimates muy costo, eh, that the cost of uh, of traffic accidents in our country was at least approaching uh, 1% of the GDP. That does not mean that it was reduced with compared to what happened in 2012 or 13. But one of the features of this study is that it takes very conservative uh, measurements, very conservative parameters, and uh, also that in absolute um, terms, it is a figure that approaches what was estimated in 2012 or 13. But given the growth of the economy, it represents a lower amount of the GDP. However, let us remember that from that time until today, deaths, um, deaths for traffic accidents have not, be, have, not, have not reduced. They have stabilized at about 16,000. We need to bring down those figures. The launch of the second decade of action for road safety has been held, and in it we are committed to reduce at least by half all the deaths by traffic accidents uh, for uh, 2030. Paola Alma and many other colleagues are working tirelessly to reach zero deaths uh, due to traffic accidents. It is possible. There are countries, there's at least, there's at least one country that has, that has achieved that. And we need to walk in that direction. And all efforts need to be taken by the government and industry, but also for citizens must demand that uh, that goal. If you'll allow me, Paula, not everything is money. It is uh, great that the, that the automotive industry is um, is an employer, but for a low amount, they could be selling safe vehicles to citizens of Mexico. In the end, we're not statistics. We are people and we are families that deserve the life and safety. Now, this is the second uh, decade of action for road safety because on the first uh, decade, the results were not uh, really favorable for, for road safety and for uh, to the Senate to deliver the global plan for road safety. And this includes road safety and the demand to all the countries in the United Nations. We're so necessary in a country as unequal as ours. Now is the time. Muchas gracias. Well, thank you. We've come to the end of this presentation. I would like to say goodbye without mentioning again the importance of the uh, importance of your participation in this public consultation, www.quetanseguroestado.org slash consulta. It is very important for us as citizens to exercise our rights to be involved and participate in road safety. Because it um, evolves us all. That's the time to say goodbye, Stefan Omar Alma. Thank you very much for a great presentation. And undoubtedly, we will uh, take a lot of this uh, to reflect on. Thank to all our colleagues joining us from different sites, including our members of the press. Uh, thank you, Paula, and good day, everyone. Gracias.